This is a unicorn by XYL, a KM9 is the name of the company, so there's a nine on the side there. The unicorn is a great compact blaster. It is really sturdy um, and really cheap out of the box. Retail for around $95, and it's got quite a few uh, add-ons and um, options you can do with it. So here's the unicorn. First of all, the shell is very sturdy. It's uh, injection molded nylon, and so it's very thick shell as well. Um, because of that, there is quite a bit of weight to it. There is also metal internals. So the trigger and the catch um, are all metal. So it adds a little bit of weight to it, but that's uh, a cool feature um, on the inside. Some other features is it has a quick takedown. You just pull two pins out and you can take the whole thing apart. There you go, there's your spring, plunger, and everything else. You can see the metal catch and sear in there. So that's a really handy feature. The spring it comes with by default is 1.6. It's a really nice CQB platform. It comes with a kind of an offset vertical foregrip, if you like that kind of style. So then you've got the little bit of Picatinny here. So you could put a, you can fit, you know, a short angled foregrip on it. That's totally fine. Here this is with the standard, you know, cap slug angled foregrip. It's on two rails of Picatinny right now. Um, it also has this adjustable stock. It has a button on the back for three positions. You have a middle position and then a fully collapsed position. So it's very compact. Um, it has this setup right now has a Picatinny on top for your attachments. But what you can also do is you can remove that Picatinny and install a top prime. So that way you could top prime it if you want a little bit more compact and pump action is a little bit uh, too large for you. It also has a safety. So right-handed safety for right-handed users on the side. And it has a button mag release. It is compatible with worker straight talon magazines in similar shape and size with that button release. It's a little tight with the, uh, with the talon mags. Um, the magazine it came with um, is a little bit looser. It can still gravity drop a little bit. So this is the sample they sent. It's been through a lot of uh, events and wars already, so it is a little bit dirty on the shell. Um, but this one we've got tuned in. It's a pretty good air seal, if you can hear that. Pretty good air seal there. Out of the box, it really didn't have any air seal at all. Um, so we had to fix it up. But out of the box, it was with that low air seal and the what they call the half gas plunger tube, which is literally a plunger tube that they have reduced the air volume by half. So the half gas plunger tube with the 1.6 spring they sent and the half gas plunger tube with a uh, slightly modified air seal, we were hitting about 145 out of the box, which is pretty good for the size. Um, using a full gas plunger tube, the one that we made in house, uh, that does not have the slot, that'll be standard on all of the overseas models like you get here in the United States. With that full gas version, a stronger spring, you can get this up to 160s, 170s. They say that you can get it up to the 180s and, and push it to 190s with a longer barrel and a 1.8, kind of a much bigger heavy duty spring. However, the prime would be a lot heavier at that point and I don't think that the form factor would suit that, uh, that heavy of a spring at that point. When we first got this sample, it was pretty stiff out of the box, but as it's broken in, it's actually gotten a lot smoother. So I would say this is a viable uh, CQB kind of mid-power blaster. This is hitting about 150. Um, again, that 145, 150 range. And so it's got like a perfect kind of a nice prime to it. Kind of what you would expect. Um, on the wall here, I have the three blasters I thought were most similar in form. So you have the Spamp, if you're familiar with the Spamp modification homemade, so it's almost the exact same size as a Spamp, maybe a, a hair bigger, um, and the Spamp has that top prime. And so uh, the Spamp is really popular among HVZers for its small size, and it hits about you know 130 or 120, perfect for HVZ. So small size, um, and it has that mag and handle, or mag in front of the handle, fit like that. So it's very similar to the Unicorn. So that's what I first thought of when I saw the Unicorn. I thought it was a, uh, a better version of the Spamp. Now I have a Super Spamp here with the pump action grip and the stock, so you can kind of compare that. Again, it's very similar in size. And then for performance wise, some people were saying that the Spamp has a very little plunger volume and the Unicorn has a little bit bigger volume. And the next blaster in performance wise that I would compare it to is the Aeon. It still has a very similar shape to the Aeon. Aeon is a little bit bigger 
Uh, the Aeon has a top prime, same as a Unicorn can have as well. If you swap out this top prime grip, you get that very similar feel. However, the, I think the Aeon has a little more plunger volume and so the Unicorn gets a little bit less performance than the Aeon. So the Aeon gets about 150, the Unicorn gets about 140 with a very similar prime. But if you take a, a, force, a force meter and measure the prime force on all of these blasters, the Aeon and the Unicorn have very similar prime weights. Um, so that's a expected performance out of the 145, 150 FPS range. That's what the Aeon gets. But this Prime is much comfier, shell is much better, easier to take down and mod. So some more features is it can use different style uh, Airsoft AEG grips. So for different form factors, not commercial spec grips like the M79 or a lot of uh, you know real steel hardware Magpul. Um, this is Airsoft grip here. Um, and you can switch out the grip, which is nice for the vertical grip, top prime. You don't have a lot of room to do a vertical foregrip. So if you can imagine putting your hand here and then pulling it back, you know, you'd run out of room pretty quick, but you might have just enough room if you have small hands. Firing actually is it's pretty dang accurate. Out of the box. Some other features, do you have a prime assist? You have a return spring on the barrel so you can let go and have it fall forward and you can fire it which is nice, except for if you have a good air seal, I've noticed that if you have a dart in it and you pull back and let go, it will actually sometimes, you know, return pretty slow because of that dart creating that air seal in there. And you can't fire it unless the grip is all the way forward and you engage the catch. So that's like a lot of slam fire blasters, like the Rampage, like a, a bunch of them. Um, zinc, um, all of them, you have to have the pump grip forward, but with an assisted prime, I'd want that assisted prime to be reliable, but sometimes it doesn't fully reset. So you may have some issue with that fully resetting, but that is a nice feature to make the prime just a hair faster. Um, and then the other feature here is slam fire. So because of that a metal catch we saw, they built it in because it has a slam fire catch, like I mentioned earlier, that when we pull it back, pull it forward, Little shoot every time the grip is pulled forward. However, um, it does seem to be a little bit finicky with how fast you can do it. Yeah, so those ones kind of just out the barrel. Um, but with some tuning, I'm sure it'd be better. So this is the Unicorn platform overall. It is really great. It also comes with a grip insert that you can put in, kind of like the uh, the Esper, um, where then you could put an end strike style stock or a bottle on stock to the bottom to have it kind of raised up to a higher eyeline sight to utilize those sights. With the normal adjustable stock, the slotting stock it comes with, you know, the eyeline's not quite right where you can't get low enough on the cheek rest to actually use those sights. Um, and I like to hold my blaster kind of up higher so I don't have to pull my neck as far down. So um, we've used this in a handful of events already. So got some good experience with it already. The sling points here are strong enough to be used as a sling point you won't lose your blaster. So that's a nice thing that they designed that to be sturdy enough to use those as sling points. Both of them are pretty equally sturdy. One thirty six, one twenty two, one fifty four, one forty two. Really depends on what darts you're using and how new they are. One sixty six. 149, nine. So yeah, that was an average of 145 on the dot with the newer darts and the bamboo is hitting a little higher than the normal Gen 3s. But there you go, that's the Unicorn. That's with the default spring, comes with a 1.6 spring. They do have a 1.7 and 1.8 spring and longer barrel. So you could get this up to, like I said, that 170s range, depending on how hard you want that prime. The Unicorn has a very solid construction um, with the nylon shell. I mean, it does pack a little bit of weight to it because of that, but it's got really thick nylon shell, it's not going anywhere with that metal catch sear system. I'm a little disappointed though that the plunger and like the RAM base and the RAM core, they're all plastic. Um, so the performance parts are not metal, but the catch is metal. Um, but overall it is a really nice form and a really solid shell, really solid feel to it and really solid construction. But yeah, this is growing on me for like a low power, 145, this is probably gonna be my go-to, but if I'm doing close range CQB, I'm probably gonna go with something more semi-auto, a little more suppressive fire. But if I needed a pump action, low power springer, this is definitely the go-to, which um, the community is kind of 
in agreement on that, especially a lot of the UK guys who do those lower power 110 to 130 FPS events. Um, this one's already hitting a little hot, so just go back to the default air seal with the half gas plunger. This has the full gas in it right now. Um, you'd, be, you'd be right at that 110, 120 mark. If you don't want to have a rail on it, you have a nice smooth cover they provide, one for the top and one for the bottom. If you take that rail off, you can cover up those spots. Just makes it look a lot sleeker and maybe keep some of the dirt out. You can pop that out. There we go. So that is where you would install the top prime. That connects to the priming slide. Spring can be pretty beefy, um, but uh, not bad if you're you know, a bigger guy running a smaller blaster, it should be fine. 